So, hello everyone. I'm uh, Klaus Restold. I'm here to talk a little bit about uh, JLink and the uh, link time optimization phase that we are adding in uh, Java 9 as part of the larger umbrella of Jigsaw. And first of all, the mandatory safe harbor statement. Don't trust anything I'm saying. Um, Jigsaw. We've uh, got a much better uh, presentations of that from uh, Alex Bakke, et cetera. But uh, on the, uh, in the scope of our talk, it's organizing, organizing code into modules. And uh, these are built into self-contained bundles called JMods. And uh, these are then linked together into a runtime image with the JLink tool. Uh, from the, one of the stated uh, goals of the jailing tool in the JEP uh, 282 was to uh, provide an opportunity to do whole world optimizations that are otherwise difficult or at compile time or costly at runtime. Uh, at the time, uh, the jailing tool was kind of envisioned as an optional tool uh, to allow for link time optimizations, but has since grown into the de facto tool for how we are generating images uh, during build time itself. Uh, the alternative would have been to use Build scripts as, as prior. Uh, but rather, we are uh, all the images that we are providing, early access builds, et cetera, have gone through JLink uh, to provide the images. In, in the base set of uh, flags, you can select and choose the modules to, uh, to include in your image. Uh, and there are these uh, meta packages like java.se that uh, contains most of what you need. Uh, while still uh, we need to, or we maintain the ability to perform optimizations during this linking phase, uh, both such optimizations that we provide by default, but maybe also uh, customized uh, optimizations that uh, developers and customers can uh, add on their own whim. Um, and this is provided by a mechanism called JLink plugins. Uh, we're allowing customization enabled, uh, uh, enabled by command line flags to the JLink tool. You can list the number, the, the default set of plugins available and, and, their, and their options in the JLink tool. And uh, beware that as per the app, the plugin API is strictly ex experimental. So while anyone can simply write a plugin, uh, add it into, uh, uh, so that the jailing tool picks them up uh, doing whatever uh, ahead of time optimization or alteration of your image, uh, be aware that anything can and will change. Uh, and I don't think we are going to support the API per, per se in Java 9. Anyhow, we do provide lots of uh, plugins predefined, uh, such as uh, strip debug, uh, compression plugins to define how, how, uh, how much compression we are <laughs> putting to the runtime image. Uh, we have an includes locale uh, plugin to be able to, well, the name is a little bit of a denomer because it's really about stripping uh, locales. And so you, rather than the default would be to include all locales with, as uh, JDK or JRE today, uh, but here we have the ability to strip outdoor uh, things. And that's one of the you know, uh, cool things about JLink. You add the ability to strip away things that you don't need uh, in your runtime environment in, in your specific deployment in a supported way. Uh, and what I'm going to talk more about here today is, well, the specifics or examples of plugins that we have been developing during uh, JDK 9 and Jigsaw development. So as a typical like uh, link time classical example uh, would be to, uh, you know, something you are referring to, a class, for example, uh, at compile time uh, that you want to load, but it's not available at compile time. Uh, for for various uh, for some reason uh, this um, then requires the use of class dot name which everyone here is likely familiar with 
uh, to do the dynamic lookup or dynamic linkage of the classes. Uh, and this provides an opportunity when you're linking together if, if the class that you're referring is statically known at link time, you can replace uh, static re uh, with static references when so, uh, that transformation is uh, valid. Passing access checks, et cetera. So plugins should, of course, defer, uh, stick to the same rules as uh, the runtime linker. Uh, plugin code themselves uh, currently is a simple trans transformation uh, uh, tool that operates on a pool of resources and builds, uh, builds a, uh, a resource pool to uh, output and then goes through a chain of these transformations. Uh, this particular uh, plugin is, of course, uh, using uh, ASM to uh, take the resource, uh, load, load the byte, byte array of the resource into uh, ASM to uh, transform or look, look for a specific pattern of bytecode and uh, thus uh, uh, replaces uh, the class forename or string load uh, class dot forename uh, invocation with a static reference to the class instead. Uh, so, oh, sorry. Uh, that kind of, that plugin was written by, I think, Jim Lasky or Sundar uh, as an example and it's not enabled by default for some reason, but uh, we haven't really evaluated if it has a significant uh, improvement. But what we, uh, in the, the Jigsaw team, uh, realized that during Jigsaw startup, we are uh, doing a lot of work uh, to set up the uh, Jigsaw module system, uh, going through reading the module info uh, classes to uh, parse, validate uh, these classes, uh, all the exports are uh, pointing to valid modules and uh, that your uh, uh, set of packages are coherent and consistent. Um, <clears throat> and for system modules uh, at link time, you kind of know that these, uh, the modules are uh, consistent or you could, you could do that validation check beforehand uh, and, well, maybe do something more. So the solution was to introduce a light jailing plugin to uh, uh, generate a pre-validated representation of this system module graph, uh, generate that as, well, more or less raw bytecode into uh, uh, the JDK internal module system modules, which then returns the uh, set, uh, list of uh, module descriptors or the graph uh, for, for the system modules. Uh, since this is done ahead of time, this provides ample opportunity for us to uh, uh, do various uh, global or minor optimizations over the set of modules that wouldn't be possible when we are parsing the module info classes one by one uh, and wouldn't be uh, you know, um, very much of an optimization if done at runtime because you, okay, you can do the duplication, for example. If uh, you from one module export one of your packages to, to this and that module, and some other module is also uh, exporting their packages to the same set of modules, then of course there's a, well, there's a duplication uh, opportunity there. Uh, this is something we, we do, uh, we exploit um, uh, prolif prolifically in this plugin and that reduces the number of uh, objects we have to constitute at the runtime and uh, provides quite a large uh, improvement in uh, both runtime, uh, total number of uh, objects created, uh, things, well, for startup, we're quite sensitive uh, to uh, things going into being uh, uh, compiled by the JIT very early, so uh, thread interaction here uh, shows that if we can shuffle or rather remove entirely the need to do various set creations and uh, object allocation during, during startup, we can see a rather remarkable uh, improvement in uh, both um, wall clock time and, uh, and real clock time. Oh, this is on a, uh, yeah, this is on a system with uh, 32 cores. So uh, it's kind of slow at startup compared to my desktop. 
Uh, right, and of course, by, since we're doing the deduplication and other micro, micro optimizations for footprint, et cetera, we uh, reduce the memory usage by quite a lot. People have, people have been asking questions about uh, why startup is so slow on Java 9, and my go-to answer has become to ask them if they are running on the exploded image or the uh, uh, image build, um, which is the, well, the build that you're producing after uh, JLink, because not, if you do run on the exploded image, not only do you miss out on this, uh, optimization. There's also other code paths being taken, pulling in lambdas uh, earlier, etc., uh, causing quite a lot of uh, object allocation, of several GCs, etc., to happen just to just to do the trivial amount of work to get to Java version. Right. Uh, the second thing that I previous to uh, working on Jigsaw, I started uh, taking a look at trying to get the down or reduce the initialization costs of Java Lang Invoke. Uh, the observation, of course, is that uh, the first usage of Java Lang, of, of any Lambda or method handle, etc., uh, initializes the Lambda meter factory, uh, lots of uh, infrastructure uh, to, to support the uh, supporting Invoke Dynamic. Um, and this uh, was reported a year, uh, some years ago, to be on the order of like 80, 80 milliseconds on some machine, and hundred, hundreds, hundreds of classes uh, uh, being uh, loaded and generated dynamically. So solutions uh, to this, uh, well, originally, people were a little bit uh, distraught. How, how can we how can we go about making making indie uh, faster? It's uh, it's such a huge problem and mess to deal with. Well, initially we looked at uh, making making the implementation lazier. Um, typical tricks to make sure that method handles that you are not really uh, using will never be initialized in the first place. That get, get, got us uh, part part of the way to. Uh, reducing the overhead, maybe 25%. Uh, but then, of course, after working with uh, uh, JLink for a while, uh, I thought, why not apply JLink to uh, give you the, or give the um, this new golden hammer of mine uh, a try uh, at um, generating uh, part of the infrastructure for uh, for Java Lang Invoke ahead of time at link time. So Java Lang Invoke is a uh, beautiful creation uh, of uh, most, most of the implementation details are in the, uh, in, uh, that are relevant for, for uh, startup. It's actually in the J uh, Java side of things. We have uh, method handles uh, creating, created by the method, method factory, method types, call sites being set up. And underneath these, uh, in the internal API, we have Lambda forms, we have direct method handles, we have bound method handles. Bound method handles represent species of uh, uh, various, um, well, uh, methods of certain arities of certain uh, class arguments, uh, etc. So if you're using a, uh, a Lambda that uh, takes or you using a method handle that takes takes a long and returns say uh, a long, you will have a um, some species representation of that in your uh, in the bound method handles. So most of these uh, classes are generated in runtime due to the fact that um, you couldn't enumerate all of them. You don't really know uh, for any particular application which bound method handles will be needed at runtime. So generating them ahead of time would be uh, detrimental to uh, footprint uh, effects, or you you would blow up your uh, your static footprint of the uh, of the runtime image itself. So uh, we need a tool, of course, to determine what uh, things to generate, and then we need a framework to uh, generate things ahead of time. Uh, first and quickest, or first step on this journey was to realize that bound method handles are quite 
well, large, complex, but also rather straightforward in their, uh, in their uh, implementation and how they are generated to bytecode. So uh, the inception of the first version of the uh, generate JLI classes plugin. Uh, oh, there's a typo there. Should be only one uh, colon in between BMH and BMH species. Anyhow. Uh, so this, this plugin allows you to specify the uh, types of bound method handle species to generate ahead of time uh, at link time. Uh, the default in the plugin uh, was picked arbitrarily uh, based on uh, the number of bound method handles used by uh, Indify String Concat, uh, the rather remarkable uh, feature to uh, replace uh, the string, string builder concat chains uh, with uh, invoke dynamic calls, giving um, peak performance opportunities that are rather uh, interesting. Uh, you should really take a look at Alexei Shipilev's uh, work on this and the talks as he's been given of this if you don't know what I'm talking about. Anyhow, the uh, BMH uh, pre-generation was, well, on the startup test of uh, Invoke, uh, in the fine string concat that I was using, I could get a total initialization overhead reduction of about 15%. So that's, that's the part of the uh, invoke uh, of the ISC uh, initialization that was bound method handles. Uh, so what I do under the cover is really uh, generate these classes, put them in the, uh, in the in image put the, uh, so that they are statically uh, created. These were kind of easy because they are, the, these classes were uh, more or less had a name already. Uh, so we could uh, just map it one to one. Uh, after that, things got a little bit uh, tougher because uh, uh, b things like uh, direct method handles, etc., are quite small. Uh, Classes, they don't really have, everything is, everything is currently built up with anonymous, uh, well, defined by anon anonymous VM classes. So uh, whatever we do to put a naming scheme on things uh, that maps to a class name or maps to a method name that we can resolve or something will, will uh, complicate the implementation details of Java Lang Invoke, but uh, at least there's now a prototype uh, to take this uh, these, uh, implementation to the next step and try to uh, generate uh, more invoke static, more invoke spe special, every di direct method handles uh, as per uh, our choosing. Again, using in the string concat as the vector of, uh, or as the profile uh, guiding uh, our hand here of what to include by default. And well, uh, one of the benefits of this approach or uh, as opposed to the current implementation is that the uh, direct method handles are methods that can be generated into a single class that we then can use as a uh, lookup source for uh, method handles. So we generate all the, 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 I generate all the DMH into this individual class and then put the, if, if you're resolving a direct method handle, uh, do a resolve on that class to see if this method is already generated. And if so, put put that into a uh, into a direct method handle and uh, bypass the uh, bytecode generation at runtime. Uh, this, of course, gets complicated because you need to def know what uh, what methods will be used and uh, uh, if you if you just overload the uh, classes that you're generating ahead of time, you might run into other problems. So the default strategy probably needs to be conservatively tuned, uh, whereas specific uh, deployments like a uh, language runtime uh, could uh, have, well, will have the freedom to, to tune the usage or the number of which classes to generate ahead of time, which kind of uh, solves the problem of uh, being having a rather uh, plastic uh, optimization target for uh, what uh, parts of the, uh, in, in the implementation to generate ahead of time. Of course, this might be those cases where you want to generate everything ahead of time to have no bytecode generation in runtime. 
and that uh, uh, so that would be a very good thing to support. So there's been a yeah. So the uh, when working on features like this, you always come into the uh, the phase of self-doubt and uh, criticizing uh, wh what you're what you're doing because uh, to deal with something at ahead of time, you're really creating uh, API hooks into something internal that isn't really designed to be uh, ho hooked in and used by something coming in from the side as a as a plugin. Uh, JLink plugins really, I mean, since they are really operating on the raw byte byte code of the uh, of the image, can pretty much do anything, uh, which is which is great uh, in theory. But um, in practice, leads to uh, an accumulation of technical depth, and we uh, to 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 uh, to deal with that, uh, <laughs> I've created a little to-do list for myself. Uh, apart from the fact that we want to generalize and pre-generate all Lambda forms when possible, and ultimately supporting replacing Lambdas in, uh, wholesale with generated code at link time. Maybe we also want to refactor uh, Java Lang invoke internals to encapsulated packages to, you know, not accumulate uh, more and more uh, technical depth and hidden uh, or undocumented uh, hooks into the uh, grow uh, into the code code base uh, of growing complexity. Uh, some of these things might also uh, uh, be dealt with. Uh, for startup and performance uh, other ways. Uh, for example, Michael Haupt has uh, some well-elaborated ideas on, on isolated methods to generate and generate methods without classes that would be uh, probably remove most of the, or, or similarly remove much of the overhead. So maybe there's a little bit of competing, uh, competing uh, implementations there, but maybe also opportunities to uh, to um, weave these together because with isolated method, if, if one of the goals is not only startup or op uh, performance per se, but also to be able to generate everything so that we don't, we can support more of those cases where bytecode generation is not feasible or possible. Uh, we want to uh, take a look at how to do isolated methods from JLink as well. Uh, also for the user of, of JLink uh, comes the problem that uh, knowing uh, what classes of uh, bound method handle species, et cetera, uh, it requires you know, a really intimate knowledge of the implementation. So to make this uh, a feasible case study for, uh, or something feasible for uh, a deployer to use, maybe we would need some tool to uh, take, take a program, run it pro through, with some profiling agent or, or or other tool to generate a configuration that we can, uh, you know, uh, put as a recipe to our uh, JLink. So maybe we need to consider looking at uh, how to uh, have let let JLink deal with more complex complex configuration scenarios in a more uh, user friendly uh, user uh, way. Anyhow, uh, beyond. Uh, I don't have many slides left. Maybe I'm talking too fast. Uh, beyond uh, Java Lang Invoke, there are uh, interesting things that we have uh, experimented with, both internally and such. And but you qu quite quickly, when you're doing looking at what you can do ahead of time, you can go into the uh, uh, deep end of the pool where there are things that we can do, but probably would break things uh, or um, uh, for some user, but um, it does open opportunities to, to do speculative, intrusive, or other application-specific alterations to the image that might be uh, quite uh, substantial in, in some cases. Uh, for example, uh, if I want to, for various reasons, if, if it's for performance, footprint, or security, or whatever, I want to remove co code from uh, system and application modules that I don't want to be there. Uh, for example, uh, assertions, uh, unused methods, 
uh, deprecated methods. Uh, hey, I want, I want to deploy a version of, of a JDK where all the deprecated methods are simply gone. Why shouldn't I be able to? Uh, because no one should be using deprecated APIs, right? So maybe that's uh, having, having intrusive uh, plugins to, to slim, simply rip out all uh, deprecated code or um, assertions or uh, object input streams or whatever uh, would be one way to, to uh, support internally or uh, for anyone uh, ways to deploy, uh, deploy images that have these uh, things uh, disabled or more thoroughly um, ripped out. Other things that we are doing, or of course, constantly looking at, is uh, if your uh, if your deployment is running specific agents uh, and always running these specific agents, maybe these uh, part of what these agents are doing, for example, is instrumenting bytecode to add hooks, do whatever, uh, or deep, deeply uh, changing the implementation details of everything from. Uh, core core networking classes in, in Java. Why not do that uh, ahead of time if your deployment is always going to run with, with an agent? So maybe agents would be interested in, or agent implementers would be interested in uh, creating a plugin to do part of what the agent is doing at runtime uh, and instead do that at uh, jailing time. Uh, and <laughs> something that we've seen a need for in some internal applications is, uh, of course, that we are running a very specific big application that is parsing or spending much of its startup time um, parsing uh, complex configuration files, et cetera. Frameworks uh, who, are, who are digesting uh, configuration might, might want to uh, pr well, produce more, uh, internal, uh, more efficient internal representations. Uh, maybe this isn't very uh, a common case, but it's uh, something we've done for uh, experimental purposes uh, with with some success. Oops, that was quick. So, uh, right, I have an appendix as well. In <laughs> Uh, there, there's quite a few uh, pre-existing uh, uh, plugins available in Jlink today. Uh, some, of, some of which we are already well using as part of the build. The first one on this list is the order resource plugin, which is really about uh, well ordering ordering resources in the in the uh, runtime archive to improve uh, cold startup. Um, and this this based on the uh, class list that we are generating in now in, in at build time as well to uh, be, be a little bit of uh, have a, have some some notion of uh, automatic profile guided optimization of the uh, runtime layout um, uh, right we have mentioned the include locales to strip out uh, strip out local data uh, that you don't want to in your or don't need in your image stripping the bug symbols etc the these uh, plugins are really about, or was have been requested by people who want to provide images, for example, for embedded uh, other use cases to, to min min well, minify uh, the, uh, the size of the runtime image. So that is an interesting set of uh, plugins available in, uh, in Jailing today, and hopefully uh, the, the family will uh, grow over time. So I guess, uh, I'm open for questions.